Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 251 of the All Dolphins podcast on this Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. You can see very clearly that we are joined by our good friends, special guest Antoine Staley of the New York Daily News, formerly covering the Dolphins down here. I don't, I don't remember for which outlet. I apologize. USA Today. See, there you go. USA Today and, and all around good. Post too. And see, there you go. That's the one I thought I remembered, but I didn't want to be incorrect. Yes. So I preferred. No, uh, yeah, you're good. Okay. But it's good to be with y'all again. Like, I always enjoy it. I always have a good time with, when I come on. That's see, what we strive for today, even though we're going to be insulting your Jets all over. No, we're not, actually. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, hey, it ain't my Jets. So, yeah, you and I are so be it all. <laughs> oh, what about the Panthers? How, how about Robert Hunt, $100 million? You feel a little. I thought that was a, that was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. Like that was, I was like, wow, okay. Like they've gone all in. And then your your boy Christian Wilkins, like you didn't think he was gonna get paid. You didn't think he was gonna break the bait, did you? Oh, Christian shut me the hell up. <laughs> 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 as, as did everybody in the as did everybody in the NFL. Like, yeah. Okay, let me pause this real quick. So, so the reason Antoine is here is not just because we enjoy talking to him, is because we're gonna look at the offseason so far from an entire AFC's perspective, not just Dolphins. And since you brought – I'm going to start with this. Since you brought up Christian Wilkins, Antoine, I'm of the opinion that Quinnen Williams is just as good a defensive tackle as Christian Wilkins. Can you please set my man straight here? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think they do different things. I mean, they're different type of defensive tackles. But I think, you know, you look at the numbers, you might think, you know, Christian Wilkins might be a better player. But, I mean, Quentin Williams, like his like pressure rate is like insane. I mean, he only had – I think he had like five and a half sacks a year ago. But, you know, he was consistently getting, you know, pressure on the quarterback. And also, he was being doubled and triple team at times too. So, I mean, you have to factor that in too. And then he was, he was the key focal point. Um, on the Jets' defensive line, which also opened up opportunities for Jermaine Johnson and Bryce Self, who's now with the Eagles and other people on that line. So, yeah, it all starts with Quentin Williams and what he's able to do on that line. So, but yeah, I, I think I think Quentin's a better player, like, to be quite honest with you. But I think Quentin is uh, a very good defensive tackle. This, he's was richer, not he's richer. this was not the conversation of the debate we had yesterday. The debate we had yesterday was – who had the Pro Bowl worthy season? I said Quentin Williams got there on name recognition, but Christian Wilkins had a better statistical season. I mean, if you look at it, what are you judging it? Just about sacks? If you judge it by sacks, then yeah, he did. But I don't judge it. Like, I think sacks are very overrated stat. I mean, it's about pressure rate. Go back and you look at the pressure rate by Quentin Williams and compared to Christian Wilkins. They both had tremendous years. There's no question about that. And it's no slight old Christian, but. Quentin Williams' pressure rate is insane. And also, like, take into account uh, Zach Sealer. I mean, you know, what he was able to do for the Dolphins, too. I think that also helped out uh, what – helped Christian Wilkins have the type of season that he did, too, as well. Okay, so, let me clarify here. I, I did not bring that up to take a shot at, at Christian Wilkins. This is not what it was about. It's because I made – I think I made the comment yesterday that the Jets, with the moves that they made on the offense, particularly the offensive line and now signing Mike Williams – to go along with what with what is a very very good defense led by Quentin Williams and then you got Sauce Gardner, they're going to be a problem. C.J. Mosley, C.J. Yeah, Mosley is a hell of a I was surprised didn't get shaken down. Nah, he's still playing at a high level. He's the captain. He's the captain of the team. They're not going to cut him. I mean, he's still playing at a high level. I mean, he's their best linebacker. I know Quincy had a really good year last year, but you know, C.J. is still playing at a very high level. This might be his last year though. Like I could definitely could see that. Uh, Seventeen you know, million plays. dollars, though. They still could restructure his deal. Yeah, they still could, you know, restructure him and you know figure that thing out too. That's okay. a lot of money. It is a lot of money. So my overriding yes. point on all of this is, if the Jets stay healthy, and of course you can say that about every team. Obviously, the Jets have a lot of guys with injury history, recent injury history. But if they don't get, yeah, they do. If they hold don't on, get hold on, hold on, hold on. It looks like they did restructure him. They did, they did. Yes, I just thought about that too. Yeah, they did restructure his deal. Yeah, damn, they, they, that like, man, let them shake him down. Let, 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 let. <laughs> damn, he loves he loves being a part of the Jets. He loves being a part of the Jets. So Ooh, he could have I mean, got real money out there on the market. Okay, he, uh, he loves it. Let me get back to my point, Antoine. As Omar continues obsessing over the salary cap and players being shaken down and 
A war contract with, getting four years. He's got and like war, years, and war with the on. players and war with the players who keep shaking down, getting shaken down. Omar, focus on that for a second. Let me let me let me talk directly to Antoine over here. So Antoine, I'm of the opinion again, if they don't get killed by injuries the way they did last year, and part of it was was because they had zero plan beyond Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Correct. Now this year they even upgraded that because they got Tyrod Taylor, who is at the very least serviceable. So if Aaron Rodgers goes down for three, four games, they're not completely done like they were last year. They, they're gonna they, have to get a third quarterback though, because obviously we know Tyrod Taylor, his injury history. So yeah, they could not. They're gonna have to have three quarterbacks on that roster. Well, they can resign Tim Boyle. I mean, they could always do that. Uh, it, Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> no chance <laughs> in hell that. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know, but I was just I just had to put that out there. No, no, I don't. Well, they so can't keep Zach Wilson too, which is not going to happen either. Bottom line, can they contend with the Bills and the Dolphins? Yeah, I, I think, think they could be a playoff. I mean, anytime you have an elite defense like they do, and yeah, I mean, you're going to be there. Like, it's just a matter of they fortified the offensive line. They've done that, uh, adding, you know, Tyron Smith and John Simpson and Morgan Moses, who was there in 2021. So I think they've done a good job with that. I still think they needed more depth there because we're talking about a team that – been snake bitten by injuries the last two years they had 13 different combinations in 17 games which i think led the league last year and then the year before that they have 11 different starters play on the line so they de they definitely need to start adding more depth and you have to take into account tyron smith has not played a full season i think since like 2016 2017 so you have to fact you have to believe he's going to miss games at some point so you have to have a plan around that which i think could revolve around the number 10 pick overall in the draft they can still take a tackle there, and I think they'll be in good shape. But, yeah, I think I love what they've done uh, defensively, but they have a lot of questions of can these guys stay healthy. I think that's the main thing. And you look at what the Dolphins the Dolphins have lost, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So I think there's a ton of questions there. I think the Bills are still the top dog until proven otherwise. But, you know, I think the Jets and Dolphins are right there uh, two and three. If, if I may ask you this question, Antoine, you talked about Quentin Williams and the fact he doesn't have a Zach Seeler playing next to him. Is Javon Kinlaw really the answer? Probably not. But, you know, he does have – Robert Sala does have familiarity with him going back to San Francisco. And, you know, he does know the system. And they hope – I mean, he hasn't played up to his potential coming out of South Carolina. But, you know, maybe playing in this defense, the one that's very similar to the one he played in San Francisco, could unleash some of the uh, things that we kind of saw him coming out of college. But, yeah, I definitely think they could still – uh, potentially add somebody there, but also they do have uh, Solomon Thomas can return it too. And the Jets like to use a variety of different, you know, defensive linemen. On uh, they like to rotate a lot of different guys at any given time, which is why they're also uh, hosting Javion Clowney, you know, there for a visit there, so it can help replace the production that was lost with Bryce Huff, who ended up leading the team in sacks last year with ten. Yeah, uh, this, uh, the part. The, the Jets have become the wayward home for disappointing San Francisco 49ers first round picks. <laughs> Is that, yeah, because Salo was there. I mean, Salo, you know, he has some familiarity with the 49ers. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. No, and this is a point where, I, and the part where I'm going to point out that, um, and this is for Dolphin fans, because we mentioned the, and Antoine talked about injuries for the Jets last year being decimated. And I can I can hear the Dolphin fans right now saying, we don't want to hear about it because the Dolphins had a lot of injuries too. And I will maintain again, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. The biggest issue with the Jets beyond the injuries was the fact that they were so pathetically prepared to handle anything happening to Aaron Rodgers. Go they were ahead. basically, they were, they were done. Um, now, having said all that now, obviously we don't know what, if he's going to be able to last or how long he's going to be able to last, but what's the confidence level that if he does play and, and can make it through the season, that it's going to be 2021 Aaron Rodgers as opposed to even 2022 it wasn't a particularly good year, but he had like a thumb injury and he had kind of semi-checked out of the Packers as well. Yeah, I don't think you need, you know, MVP Aaron Rodgers to this team to get to the playoffs. I think 2022 Aaron Rodgers would have been good enough to get them to the playoffs. They might have won nine or ten games, but I think, you know, looking at the other situations there, quarter, look at the Steelers situation at quarterback last year. I mean, you can't tell me that, 
you know, having a 2022 Aaron Rodgers would have been good enough to possibly sneak into the playoffs. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think what they're going to do is rely more on the running game and Brees Hall and pound the ball a little bit. That's why you go out and get guys like Morgan Moses and, you know, John Simpson there and Tyron Smith who can, you know, it could be more of a physical team there. Because I think it's going to be hard to ask, you know, a guy that's coming off an Achilles injury who will be 41 in December to – you know, reclaim that form. It's only one Tom Brady. Tom Brady's a unicorn. I mean, it's you can't you can't really ask a lot of quarterbacks to do what he did and playing at a high level up into his forties. But you know, I think if they're able to rely on Brees and rely on the playmakers, Garrett and Mike Wills, Mike Williams and everybody like that, I think they could get ten wins and possibly stick it to the playoffs. And anytime you have a defense like that that travels, you know, you have an up fighting chance to advance and move on. Let me ask you about Mackay Becton. I know we're talking about um, the, the the Jets' offensive line previously, um, mm-hmm. but does the addition of Tyron Smith and and Morgan Moses basically mean that they've just given up on him? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I think it's I think it's better best like that both sides move on and go in different directions there. I mean, you'd have to look at it too. Like they drafted him before Robert Sala got there too. So it was times where he kind of fell fell out of favor with the coaching staff and things like that too. And I mean, he started out well last year. I thought he played, you know, particularly well. And then and whether it was injuries or uh, penalties, I think he had like, you know, 20, like 12 penalties, you know, for the season and allowed a ton double digit sacks as well too. So when you're committing penalties, you're allowing a lot of sacks there. I think that spells, you know, trouble for, you know, a lot of different offensive lines. So yeah, I, I don't see any scenario he's probably returning. I mean, he took a visit to Cincinnati recently. So mm-hmm. I, I think he'll move on and, you know, maybe the Ravens will be a possible op- option for him. But yeah, I think it's best if he ended up going in a different, if the Jets end up going in a different direction. Interesting that the Dolphins actually wound up getting the better of the two tackles in that draft because they took Austin Jackson at 18 yeah. and it was what, number 10? And yeah, it was number 10. Um, here's one point I want to make also that I think a lot of people are going to look at the Jets defense purely statistically last year and go, well, they weren't that good. And, and it's important to know just how much stress it puts on a defense when your offense is as pathetic as the Jets were last year, where it's three and out, yes. three and out, three and out, defense back on the field. And for older Dolphin fans, or those who have followed on, it was kind of 2004 Dolphin defense, which really wasn't terrible, but the offense was so brutal that at some point you just, it just caves. Statistically, the pass defense was great. Like for the Jets, you look at that with Sauce and DJ Reed and, you know, Jordan Whitehead, who was there last year. I think pass defense was tremendous. Their run defense was terrible, however. I think they were 25th in the league there. And I think after Al Woods tore his Achilles, they lost that big body, 360 pound guy in the middle. And then in that same game against the Giants, Saquon Barkley just ran all over. And I think that started the blueprint of Tays attacking them, you know, inside and, you know, running away from Quentin. And, you know, and that's what I think a lot of teams did. You know, you go back and look at games like the Giants or the Raiders game or what the Browns were able to do on Thursday night. I definitely think, you know, that really started the trend of them being one of the worst run defenses in football. And they hope they, you know, they've corrected that. But, you know, I think that's what they're going to have to do if um, if they want to get to that elite form. That's why I think Kansas City and Baltimore were probably better defenses than them because they had that Achilles heel where they couldn't stop the run where those two teams, like, and even the Browns as well, like they could, they were doing it. They did a better job of stopping the run. Want to ask you about Mike Williams and, and his addition to this wide receiving core that features Garrett Wilson. Do you think that he can be a primary weapon for Aaron Rodgers? And, and does Rodgers have the weaponry he needs to win the AFCs? If they can, if he can stay healthy, if Williams can stay healthy, that's also another question. I mean, we we talk about a lot of guys that they signed that have questionable injury histories. So if he can stay healthy uh, for a majority of the season, then yeah, I think all you got to ask is, you know, maybe a guy like Mike Williams to get you like 65 catches and, you know, close to a thousand yards. If he can do that, then yeah, I, def- I think the Jets have a really good opportunity. It's just, it's going to depend on a lot of health and, you know, can they stay healthy? I mean, that's always the name of the game, no matter what team you're talking about, but uh they have a lot of questionable guys that had substantial injury histories. But, yeah, I think they could use another wide receiver because outside of Mike Williams and Garrett, I mean, you got Alan Lazar who fell out of favors with the coaching staff last year, uh, was inactive, you know, for the first Dolphins game too. They're already counting the days where they could potentially get rid of him. And, you know, they've kind of put him on the block. But 
I think they understand that at $10 million, you consider the lack of production that he had last year, nobody's really going to take that offer. So they're just going to have to eat it for a year. I uh, hope he can have a better year with Aaron and uh, maybe depart part ways after the season. Who who was the most painful departure of the offseason so far? And you can't name Zach Wilson or Tim Boyle. <laughs> Uh, I think Bryce Huff. I think Bryce Huff was uh, very painful for not only just a lot of Jets fans, but, you know, just kind of what they did uh, on the defensive line. I mean, we're talking about a guy that was homegrown talent, undrafted free agent coming out of Memphis and continued to get better and better. And he was their leading sack guy a year ago with 10. And he was a rotational guy. He didn't even start for him. He was more or less like a they would bring it to a baseball uh, analogy, kind of like a closer type of deal. But they would put him out there to get pressure on quarterbacks and uh, cause havoc in the backfield. So losing him, I think, was very big. And now you have to hope Will McDonald, who they took in the first round, can show signs that he could potentially, you know, be that guy. I loved him coming out of Iowa State there. I thought he was uh, very freakish there with his bend and uh, the way he was the ability to get to the quarterback. But he, it, was barely, it was basically a lost year for him last year. So, yeah, you definitely got to hope that he can help, along with Jermaine Johnson, who ended up having a much better year in 2023, can help lose help with that production that was lost. Yeah, you talk about lost years and 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 signing injury-prone players. Sound like some team that you might be familiar with. Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. It's <laughs> except the Dolphins, except, Omar, except the Dolphins always get immediate production from their defensive rookies. Their defensive draft picks like Cam Smith or Channing Tindall. Or what about Wade. Charles Harris? Charles yeah, Harris didn't do they do anything no, I was, when I was there. I was being funny, uh, Antoine. The Dolphins have had an issue getting immediate production from their defense. I'm trying to think of the last guy that you had immediate production from from a defensive standpoint from a Dolphins player. It might be Christian Wilkins. There, mm -hmm. No, Brandon yeah, Joe had, had a good rookie season. Yeah. Uh, Javon Holland had a decent, respectable rookie season. Yeah, so. I, I, yeah, I love him coming out of college. So, yeah, I thought Javon Holland was really good. And I think he's – I mean, the Dolphins are in a position – they got to start paying people. I think that's part of the problem, too. Like, obviously with two – Oh, they pay people, just not their own players. <laughs> well, that's what I mean, too. Like, are you going to lose everybody, though? Like, because they got a talented team that's returning. So, we'll see. Wow. Uh, I, I mean – what would, we you with, uh, what would you do with Waddle? What would you do with Waddle? I mean, especially when you got like a Tyreek Hill there too. What do we do with Waddle? Hit him with yeah, a fifth yeah, what year option. Would you give him you give him a lot of money? Hit him with a fifth year option. Worry about it later. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, right now, if you look at the deal that Jerry Judy just signed, I believe he's at like 16 million a year. If 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 Jalen Waddle wants to take 16 million a year, come on down. Let's, Hell let's yeah. where do we sign? You do um, that in a heartbeat. But I'm pretty sure that Jalen Waddle probably thinks he's a $20 million a year player, and we'll just let the process play itself out. We'll see how this goes. But um, it, as Alan Pupard knows, I'm looking at a complete reset in 2025 with a new GM. So I'm not making any commitment to anything about any, or anybody. With a what? So you say that, though. So you say it might be a complete reset with the Jets. It might be one with the Dolphins. And then the Patriots – it's smart, like they're starting their reset now, so it's gonna it'll be interesting. And and I think um, you know let let's move on to Buffalo because I with all the losses, you know, the Dolphins weren't the only team that had to purge roster, purge players, and top end talent, and get cheaper to get under the salary cap. I think Buffalo took a lot of licks, didn't really add that much unless you consider Curtis Samuel, you know, some top flight free agent target. And then on top of that, we don't know about the situation with Stefan Diggs, who I sense wants to force his way out of, of Buffalo. Yeah. Um, please convince me that the Jets are not better, are better. I, to me, I think I'm still picking the Bills until proven otherwise. Yeah. Like I'm still, because you got one of the best quarterbacks in football, Josh Allen. So you got a top three or four quarterback, however you want to put them between, you know, Lamar and obviously. Joe Burrow, I think, is there too, and obviously Mahomes. I think you got. I didn't get to his name. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't hear to his name. You, you try to get me in trouble, like you know, I, 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 I think there was an exclusion of to his name. I, I honestly I already wrote an article about to or two. Like I, I said, I, I'm not convinced though they should give him money, like big money. So, and then some Dolphin fans were not happy about that. So, it is what it is. Like I think he's a very good quarterback, but I don't think he's. Um, 
if you talk about the top five quarter, I'm not sure he's top ten. Like so, if you talk about the top quarter upper, upper echelon quarterbacks, like I don't think he's there. Here's a question, Antoine. Though, and you have to answer it. No dodging it. Tua or, Tua or Aaron Rodgers. I'll take Tua right now because, like, I, I'm not sure what Aaron Rodgers is going to be coming off of the Achilles injury at his age. So I would, I would take at least I know what Tua is. So I would take Tua right now. And what is he? Uh, above average quarterback. I think he's above average. I think he's in that Kirk Cousins type of mode. I you can that. win, but you have to have a lot of talent surrounding him, like what the Falcons are trying to do. Would you, would you give him Kirk Cousins money? Um, probably not. But um, I think he's there in that class too. I think the Fal- Falcons have been starved for quarterback play for since Matt Ryan. So I mean they're desperate. So and then that's all they needed. I mean they got a ton of talented like playmakers with B. John Robinson and Drake London and Kyle Pitts, who has not lived up their expectations. But I don't think a lot of that his fault too. Like I think they have a they just needed a quarterback to come in there and okay. then produce too. Like and that's kind of what they've been lacking. I like Kyle Pitts coming out, but I just don't think Arthur Smith knew how to use him. Uh, he certainly smoked the Dolphins when they played here in 2021. That may have well, been like this best the Dolphins game. Dolphins can't stop a tight end? Oh, no. Like, Shocking, I, right? I, I, I haven't oh, heard that before. Oh, that's a <laughs> no, that, that wasn't the problem last year. The problem last year was crossers. Um, oh, my gosh, yes. Anyway. No. So um, Buffalo, we didn't address <laughs> Buffalo. We didn't fully properly address Buffalo. I was about are, to they, are they coming back to the pack? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think they still need – they need a lot of help too, especially with the losses that they've had um, on really, you know, both sides of the football. They're losing Gabe Davis, I don't think it's necessarily a big deal. I mean, you could, you know, have Curtis Samuel pick up some of that same production. And Gabe Davis uh, suffered for a lot of drops. He was inconsistent at times. But I think what they did last year, which was very smart, uh, especially under Joe Brady, they were, they were more of a physical team. So I think they're going to lean on that a little bit more with James Cook there. And then that takes pressure off of Josh Allen, too, where you're not asking him to play hero ball, you know, for three or four quarters throughout the course of a game. Yeah, because we know he's susceptible to throwing interceptions, kind of what you saw, you know, the last game of the season against the Dolphins there. You want to rely and lean on that running game just to be successful. Poupard. So um, definitely, uh, definitely curious to see how them and the Jets are going to uh, match up, especially after Deion Dawkins' comments on <laughs> the offseason, too. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about the Patriots. <laughs> now, they did a quarterback dump, getting rid of Mac Jones, sending him to Jacksonville. No, Obviously, we're about, about the Patriots. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What'd you say? Well, they, they, they still want to get the Patriots are irrelevant now. Sorry. Oh. Guys. I don't know if Patriots are ever, ever irrelevant. I mean, are the Patriots rebuilding? Is that how we view them now? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they are. They definitely are, which is, again, it's not a bad thing when you talk about it could be turnover, depending on what happens with the Dolphins and depending on what happens with the Jets too, because if the Jets don't make the playoffs, they're going to have a lot of changes that's going to go about. So for them to start that process now, I think it's very smart just to get Belichick out of there, get Mayo in there, get a quarterback. You have Jacoby Brissett, which I thought was a really good sign. Obviously, he's familiar with the area and that organization. And he could be a good bridge guy to whoever they decide to take between Jaden Daniels or Drake. Are are you really riding that Jacoby Brissett is a starter in the NFL? I think he's a a placeholder. He's a placeholder. (sighs) He's a placeholder. He's a good placeholder. You're right. You're right, Antoine. You're absolutely correct. He's a good placeholder, too. Jimmy Garoppolo. I, mean, I, know, I know he didn't play well with the Dolphins. I get that. But. Jimmy Garoppolo is a placeholder. Jacoby Brissett is a roster filler. I think he was I think fine, he was fine in Cleveland. Right now. He was fine in Cleveland. I think Brissett's a better player than Garoppolo right now. Right at this moment. At this moment. Who knows? Either way, like either way, they're placeholders. Like they're just they're stopgap guys until you find your starter. Like, and that might be, he might play five or six games and then you put your starter in there, your long-term solution. But either way, you're not winning substantially with either one of those guys at a high level. Yeah, when you take a look at their roster, man, it it looks like a team that has been in a rebuild mode. They look like the 2019 Miami Dolphins where it's just hodgepodge, mess, gap fillers everywhere on that roster. I like their offensive line. I like the KJ Osborne signing. I thought that was pretty good. But yeah, they, we'll talk about five win team, maybe, if we're being generous at the moment. 
Correct. And and going back to the Bills, uh, to me again, until I'm with you, Antoine, until proven otherwise. And the fact that they have the guy in the last couple of years who's come through, they have the quarterback who's come through at big moments who can take over a game. Uh, and as long as he remains that dude, uh, it's not going to be an easy task for either the Dolphins or the Jets to unseat the Bills. It's four in a row now. Um, to me, and, and we talk about the, the quarterback rankings, Josh Allen's no worse than three, depending where you want to match him up with Burrow. Right. To me, it's clearly Mahomes, then Burrow or Josh Allen are clearly the next. And then team. Lamar will probably be four. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. You disrespect to Lamar like that? I mean, he's, he's a tough five. He's, I mean, I thought Josh Allen played better against the Chiefs than Lamar did. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fair. Like, I thought I thought the Bills had a better chance to win that game than the Ravens did. I, I didn't think it was any moment in that playoff game that the Ravens were going to win. I thought the Bills had a really legit shot, and then that game could have went either way. The Ravens looked like they coached scared of the Chiefs is, is, what, is what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Yes, it looked Correct. Yeah. It looked like they were they were afraid that they 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 thought they they needed to throw the ball over the place to to keep up because of what Mahomes could do and they got behind early and they just panicked. Kind of, yeah, kind of, sort of. They didn't um, go. They didn't do what they what got them there. Like I feel like they just right. you know went off schedule and went off brand, which you gotta you gotta you gotta you know do it what gets you to that point. And I didn't feel like they did that. They try to you know throw the ball a little bit, and that's just not Lamar. Like this is not his mo. Yeah, let me ask you, Antoine, uh, piggybacking on what we were talking about with the Buffalo Bills. How do you see the Stephon Diggs situation playing out in Buffalo? I think he's he's probably going to stay another year, but you know I think he would like to move on. Uh, but you know you look at that cap hit, like why why would you if you're Buffalo, why would you decide to get rid of him? I mean I know he's unhappy. I know you know he probably doesn't want to be there. You know have you seen an unhappy step on Diggs? Do you think you can stop, swallow that stomach that for an entire season? But what's your other option though? I mean I guess you could try to find a quarterback. I mean a wide receiver in the draft, which they need to do anyway. They need to still find another wide receiver, any whether they keep this or not. But I would just keep him another year because that cap hit is like huge, and I don't think it benefits them to get rid of Stephon Diggs, especially the playmaker that he is. And they What's paid up? him What's a up, bonus. Man? They paid him a bonus this weekend, exactly. I believe. Exactly. Like, yeah, he's he's on the roster there. Like, he they paid him the bonus. Like, yeah, he's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Incur. Uh, Quickly turning to the draft, you Jets pick what nine, ten? What? They they pick Tiff. Okay, what what do you figure they go for? I think they need to go offensive line still because I mean Tyron Smith again has a one year contract. We know the injury history of him. You know, Fuaga, I think from Oregon State is still a possibility there. Uh, if Ola Fashano from Pitt State, you know, if he slides down to ten. Also, is another possibility. I mean, it could take best available player, which could be a wide receiver. And then you talk about Roman Doomsday, possibly. Uh, they do need wide receiver help as well. But for me, again, considering all the injuries that they've had on the offensive line, I think I think you, that'd be smart and wise for them to address that there. And I expect the Dolphins to do the same thing too in the draft. Like I've been I've been pounding on the table that's to take Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon. I think he would just be a very versatile guy for them. Whether you place him at guard or place him at center, I just think it makes too much sense for them. Well, they have their center, so no center, no center for the Dolphins. I, well, he can, play, uh, he can play guard. He, he can no. play. He can play a lot of different positions on the, on the line. So. And you need I, that versatility, especially think, considering all the injuries that they've had. Like, you need that versatility. I think he's still in the mix. You can't tell me who the backup center is right now. So, we'll 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 figure it out. But he is. Sam Pensatelli is the backup center right now. Okay, okay. That's, that's not that's not a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> need, Man, need more drafting him in the second round. I tried to come up with somebody from your from your era, Antoine. <laughs> is that before your time, actually? <laughs> I know, Sam, I know who he is, though. Okay. Yeah, he got banished by Bill Parcells and then actually came back under a new regime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, is, but they, yeah, they, they still got to address the depth of the offensive line too, because I mean they're the same spot that the Jets were. Like they lost, they had, I think they, what they have like twelve different combinations mm -hmm. on the line. So yeah, you got to address that too, and especially when you're trying to pay, you try to protect the guy who I know Tua stayed healthy last year, but he does have a distinction in injury history too as well. So. I think it'd be wise, especially if they're going to pay him during the offseason. You got to protect that investment.
Mm -hmm. We're here talking with Antoine Staley of the uh, Daily News, right? New York Daily News, yes. New, New York Daily News. Antoine, um, tell me the surprise move of free agency that really got your attention. Uh, probably uh, any team. Yeah, any team. I probably Saquon going to the Eagles. Like I, I definitely wasn't expecting that. I mean, I was like, wow, okay. So that was definitely uh, a bit surprised there. We talked about Robert Hunt too. Like it's not as much like him going to the Panthers really didn't surprise me, but the amount of money that he got paid. I mean, I know the Panthers need a lot of offensive line help, but I was like, Jesus, like he he broke the bank. Like <laughs> I was like, because he was going to be a target for the Jets, but. Once I saw that, I was like, "It's no way the Jets were were paying." Michael Tomlinson so, done, no good. I, I think he'll land somewhere. He might go back to San Francisco. Um, I think that's a possibility for him. He played, you know, some of his best ball there. I just think that he had a large cap number. They didn't owe him any more money, and then he's a veteran, and then he struggled at times last year too. So you factor all those things in. I think that's the reason they ended up releasing him. Why did he struggle? You think because the the talent around him on the offensive line was was that bad, or because he lost his edge? They had no continuity whatsoever. He was the only he was the Iron Man the last two years on the Jets' offensive line. He played thirty four games. He was the only player to play every single game for the Jets the last two years. And I think part of that is the lack of continuity that was around them. I mean, look at the left tackle position. I mean, you had Dwayne Brown. He had a shoulder injury in 2022. I mean, Dwayne Brown basically played like two games last year as well. And then it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of turnover there. So I think that, and also I think Lincoln struggled um, with pass protection too. So, and, you know, obviously the quarterback situation went an idea when you have, you know, Zach Wilson who can hold the ball you know, way too long than what he does. So, again, you factor all those days in. I think he'll play better somewhere else, but he definitely struggled um, in particular last year. You surprised he hasn't been moved yet? What, Zach? Yeah. Oh, no, not at all. Like, they're probably going to have to release him. Like, because, I mean, Matt Jones got his, he got, he got traded for a six round pick. What would you give up for Zach Wilson? A swap of a, a swap of six round picks. No, I wouldn't do that. Cup of coffee I in the newspaper. And then also, not to take into account, Woody Johnson threw him under the bus at NFL honors, saying, Oh, we didn't we don't have a backup. We didn't have a backup quarterback last year. I know they have to get rid of him. So why am I gonna give anything of value for him? You know what? He could be Skylar Thompson out. No, no, he can't. No, he can't. Damn. Wow. Really? No? You are down on the man. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand. He has he has seen bad quarterbacking play. I believe you. You was Chad Haney your first quarterback, or or did you? No, get no, no. Uh, it was Tanner Hill's first year. What twenty twelve? Twenty twelve. So that's so where they know. had Tanner Hill. David Garrard was there, and um. So you witnessed David Garrard smoke him. Till Matt Moore. Matt Moore is the other one, Antoine. Yes, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah it was that three zero. People, trio, people act like it was just it, it, I was seeing things. David Garrard smoked Ryan Tannehill until he got hurt. He got hurt. That's the reason. Like he he would have played if he didn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. So playing playing with his kid in the backyard. Talk about talk the about pool. The, was the backyard inside the house, or was in, the pool was in the backyard, or was in the, inside the house? But you're acting like they're playing on grass. You see how we fight? You see what we fight about? This, this hey, pool? I forgot. Uh, like after that, like I forgot he landed with the Jets for a little bit before he ended up retiring. I don't even remember that. Yeah, exactly. Right? I did. I didn't bring it up. But, I mean, I didn't know until one of the Jets writers brought it up to me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, okay." Mm -hmm. But he didn't. He didn't last too long with the Jets. I think he, you know, a training camp, and that was it. My surprise move of the offseason, Derrick Henry to the Baltimore Ravens, which I think is just going to add a new dimension to that team. Um, also like Hollywood Brown to the Kansas City Chiefs. I think oh, the title man. contenders, they just got they just got better. And um, I'm curious to see who's going to add Xavier Howard to there, because I think he's trying to latch himself onto a title contender. So yeah. who, who, who he's going to add to to try to help that team get better. So. Yeah, the Chiefs, man, they're just a machine. But I don't know if I see somebody winning three in a row. I think that's so hard. I think it's incredibly difficult. Chiefs will take over here. Omar, you really? I'm going to let it slide that, that you said that Derrick Henry to Baltimore was a surprise move. I thought it, I thought it was always typical. I was like, oh, okay, I can see that. That's what they well, need. Done deal from the start. I mean, holy moly. It, it, it's a surprise. It, it's 
Uh, it's it's not a surprise, but it's a surprise. But good teams, they figure out a way to make themselves better and add the missing ingredients that can make them title contenders. Unfortunately, we cover the Dolphins and the Jets. So I I, remember, I know you wanted Derek Henry with the Dolphins, though. I know you were like driving. I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I, that doesn't mean I can't want it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but that does not mean I can't want it. I think my surprise move was Patrick Queen to the Steelers. I, I that was know. a good move. Yeah, and that was a very good move. I'm not, I'm not sure. I saw, except I'm curious to see because Patrick Queen was wasn't necessarily great his first couple of years in Baltimore. Then they got Roquan Smith, and all of a sudden it's like zoop. So I'm curious to see how he's going to pan out without Roquan. He's a product of Roquan Smith. Everybody, everybody's a product of Roquan Smith. You, you know me. You know me and Roquan Smith. I mean, yeah, we got I this going on. Roquan Smith. Yes. Um, well, I think. Uh... <laughs> I think that's a good situation for him with Pittsburgh, though. I think if anywhere, if he were to go somewhere else, I think that's the place to go because they have a lot of surrounding talent defensively. And, and then and you got a sack artist and uh, TJ Watt, too, that could help you. And who wins that starting quarterback spot? Or better yet, who finishes as a starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh? It should team? be Fields. Like, you you have to hope Fields wins the job because at least you have a quarterback moving forward. I mean – Russ might start out as the starter, but you want if you're the Steelers, at least I I would think you would want Justin Fields there because I'll see Russell Wilson stay there more than the year. We shall see. That's well, what apparently, apparently though, Tomlin's already told Wilson he's the starter. So for now, I mean, you say a lot of different. You say a lot of things in March, like they don't they sure. really don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Well, Antoine, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you joining the All Dolphins podcast, as you guys know. Antoine, you do your own podcast. Where can you? Where can the people find your work? That page breakdown. Uh, you got another episode coming out tomorrow too, as well. You can find me there on the Believe Network. Also, my you know work with the New York Daily News too, nydailynews.com, and this all uh, social media platforms. Uh, Antoine Staley. Excellent work. Antoine, we appreciate you joining us on All Dolphins Podcast. You know how to find our work um, for free, alldolphins.com. You know where to find the podcast on any platform you hear audio podcasts. You can find us under the name All Dolphins, and we will see you tomorrow.